I coded with Windows Subsystem for Linux for a week and it's actually pretty good. It's a way to run a GNU Linux environment directly on Windows, unmodified without the overhead of a traditional virtual machine or dual boot setup. The command line tools, utilities, and applications you're used to, and without the stupid backslashes that for some reason Windows has yet to change. The program I built to test it out, a code racing website to put your typing skills to the test, but more on that in next video. Let's talk WSL, the system I've been adverse to ever since its initial release six years ago, for no reason other than my distaste for Microsoft at the time. There's no way they got this right. The company now allowing us to use GNU Linux directly on Windows, when only 20 years ago they had this guy as their CEO. I love this company, yeah! who just outright called Linux a cancer for intellectual property, which is really confusing because I, I thought he was for, well. Developers, 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 developers. And as iconic as that clip is, I'd rather be rocking with this man right here who had this to say about Microsoft. Fuck you. <laughs> Oh, wait, no, he said that about NVIDIA. This is what he had to say about Microsoft. From an OS perspective, they just suck. And from a morals perspective, they suck even more. But has Microsoft turned a new leaf since those days? The days where they hated anything and everything free and open source? Hated it so much, in fact, that they put together strategies and campaigns all throughout the late 90s and early 2000s to take Linux down? They'd like for you to believe they have. In recent years, Microsoft has become more and more intertwined with the open source world, buying GitHub, developing for Linux, and even being a longtime contributor, one of the biggest contributors to the Linux kernel even if it is only for their own benefit. And with the new CEO taking the complete opposite stance as his predecessor, claiming Microsoft loves Linux. So what changed? Are they really now following through with Steve Ballmer's other sentiment being for developers? I'm not sure, but I think they've gone through with the old adage, if you can't completely dominate your opponent, join them. Or in this case, have them join you. Keep people using Windows by letting them use Linux via Windows. That's freaking genius. That is where Windows Subsystem for Linux comes in. Only needing to type WSL dash dash install into a PowerShell with administrative access, you can have Linux installed on Windows. You just restart your PC, which I just rebuilt mine with a custom water cooling loop and made a video about it in case you're interested, and now you have Ubuntu, or whatever other available distro if you decided to specify during the install process. And I didn't want to do anything fancy here when testing it out. I just followed exactly what Microsoft insisted by setting up Windows Terminal using the default OS Ubuntu and setting up VS Code with the remote extensions. So WSL, Windows Subsystem for Linux. I actually like it, but why? Well, I already told you, we don't have to worry about the infamous Windows backslash crap, and that's really it. Uh, thanks for watching. Please subscribe. I'll see y'all next week. Just kidding. Kind of. Because Windows Terminal already allows that, but it's not a new shell. It's just a UI built on top of the existing shells. But for WSL2, the whole idea is to be able to use Linux on Windows. And for someone who uses a dozen or so applications that aren't available on native Linux, this is a treat. Not just because I can, but due to how seamless it is. That's what makes it. That's the reason I tell you I've used this for a week and actually like it. The concept is cool in theory, but the execution is very well done. When I'm in my development environment, which is really just Windows Terminal next to VS Code, I have access to the Unix-like command line shell. Not only for sorting through my directories in a more convenient manner than Windows, but also invoking Linux applications on Windows and Windows applications in a Unix-like manner. I can't be the only one that's tried to use an application on Linux just to find out it's a Windows executable. Sure, there's Wine, and kudos to the developers of it but I've had more trouble with wine on Linux than I've had after drinking a whole bottle IRL. Compared to traditional Windows, it currently supports better performance speed, system call compatibility, and alignment between your local development environment and deployment environment. All of this is especially true for JavaScript frameworks. And the workflow. The workflow 
is going from Windows workflow, which is I've always struggled with and found annoying, to an actual Linux workflow. No exceptions or caveats. It really is just like the typical Linux workflow. For example, when running VS Code Remote in WSL by right-clicking down here and opening a new window, or just typing code dot in Ubuntu, only the UI is running on Windows. Everything else is running entirely on Linux. I get to use all of the Unix commands and web dev commands that I'm used to without Windows yet at me and even though it's running entirely on a whipped up Linux server I can still access all of my Windows files so no hopping back and forth that's what I noticed in my week of using WSL2. Not all of these cool new features, no, we know how Linux works. What I've noticed is that it works seamlessly just as you'd expect Linux to work, but with the compatibility you'd hope for from Windows. So to the WSL2 team at Windows, I may be a couple years late, but well done. And this does not replace having Linux as your sole operating system. All of the troubles and worries and issues of Windows are still looming. Privacy concerns, reliability, security, and everything else I listed in that one video I made about why I code on Linux instead of Windows. But for someone like me, who, when I dual booted my PC, had to constantly switch from one operating system to another multiple times a day, or when I switched to running my Linux environment on Windows in an incredibly slow virtual machine that wasn't even cross-compatible with Windows, so in other words, for someone who needs Windows to some capacity, WSL2 really is an amazing option, and I'd recommend it to anyone. Well, that fit the criteria that I previously laid out. I hope you enjoyed this video. Consider subscribing if you did. I'll see y'all back here soon.